Mudoni nayo guataniro ya mawakiri ni hede iraruta domereli yayo Iguru ya maudu maria marahanika goko furorine Tuwa betu dhikiriria president wa LSK uliorari ya kahida inegaka It is the position of the law society of Kenya that both the gazette notices are unconstitutional And parliament has, though they have uh, attempted to approve the same post de facto We have since gone to court and we are happy to announce that the court has issued orders stopping the proposed or purported deployment and we will share with you a bit more on the orders that the courts has since pronounced itself on article 23 subsection 3b of the constitution that has been cited by the cs defense in his gazette notice allows the kdf to be deployed to assist other authorities in cases of emergency or national disaster no state of emergency has been declared and there is no national disaster. What is contemplated by the Constitution as a national disaster are such matters like landslides, volcanic eruptions, floods, hurricanes, tornadoes, tsunamis, cyclones, and the likes. Ideally, a national disaster requires to be officially declared. The CS only calls it a security emergency. The CS was avoiding the more applicable article 241 subsection 3c which allows kdf to be deployed in areas where there is unrest or instability the mischief the cs has avoided is the mandatory parliamentary approval which they have tried to get post the, the fact the only thing required of parliament under section 31 of the Kenya Defense Forces Act is to be informed of such deployment, but there is no provision for it to do or not to do anything about it. The status is now that all areas in Kenya are to be overseen by the military and not just a single area. We know that their deployment is indefinite. The number and rankings of the military personnel to be involved is indeterminate, and the terms of reference is also vague. Parliament had no role to approve or reject such deployment under the provisions mischievously applied by the CS. The other shortcomings of the deployment is that there is nothing to show that it has been approved by the Defense Council as required by Section 20, Subsection 1, GA of the Kenya Defense Forces Act. In addition, the purported deployment does not comply with Section 35, Subsection 9 of the Kenya Defense Forces Act, which requires the military officers involved be trained appropriately prior to <coughs> such deployment. To Professor Kithure Kindiki, Cabinet Secretary, Ministry of Interior and National Administration. The CS Ministry of Interior and National Administration, a senior advocate and professor of law, last Wednesday, June 23, 2024, attempted to curtail the rights of Kenyans to peacefully protest and has remained silent on the abduction and torture of Kenyans held for days in Comunicado in the hands of the law enforcers. We will hold you equally accountable. To the Inspector General of Police, Jafet Kome, the IG has failed in his mandate. He has witnessed the loss of hundreds of lives that has suddenly ended by evil. Despicable acts of terror meted by the police against peaceful protesters. He as well has continued to keep mum and not talk about the abductions, not talk about the killings that have been ongoing, not talk about the role of police. We will equally hold him accountable. The Nairobi Regional Police Commander Adamson Bungay. We find the regional police officer personally liable for illegal arresting protesters infringing against the rights of an arrested person, attacking journalists and medical officers. Those who serve in the diplomatic corps have failed to hold this government to account. In the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends, as was once said by Martin Luther King Jr. We call upon the international community to conduct independent investigations on the massacre method on the residents of Gidurai area, Nairobi, in the night of 25th June 2024. I dare ask, is Gidurai a protected area? Is Gidurai an area that should, members of the public should not stay, should not live? Why was there a massacre where people are living peacefully? 
We demand answers to those questions, and that's why we are demanding the international community to have independent investigations done. Yesterday, the internet was down. People could not communicate, but from social media, people have been saying that about over 100 people were killed yesterday. And so we cannot allow those lives to go uncounted, that the people who have caused those deaths to be held accountable. Fellow Kenyans, please note that we are on our own in this struggle. So let us unite in our resolve for justice and peace. Our great nation has prevailed over tough times before. We will also do so this time. None of us will ever forget what happened yesterday. Do not relent. We march forward together in the defense of our constitution. We pray for the repose of the souls of those who died yesterday as we ask God to grant healing to the sick and injured in hospital across the country. We stand together seeking justice for all who are killed, injured, including those who lost their properties and valuables. We dare ask that there were demos in Nakuru, there were demos in Nairobi, there were demos in Meru, there were demos in Mombasa. And I say quite curious, there were demos in Kericho and Eldoret. We are waiting to hear how many were killed in those counties. Yet we can see the scores of deaths that were recorded in other counties. And we dare ask these hard questions that the head of state and his security council should answer us. The people of Kenya deserve better than this. And more importantly, we are calling upon the head of this great nation, the father of this nation, His Excellency the President. Remember that Kenya is the country that you're governing. Remember that all these people are your people. If you destroy your nation, you'll ha don't ha you won't have a nation to rule over. We're asking you to change your stance, develop a reconciliatory stance, bring your people together, and ensure that you can heal this nation as one. Let justice be our shield and defender. I'll allow one of my council members to also just give you a preview of the orders that we have since received this afternoon. Thank you, uh, thank you Madam President. As you are aware, the Law Society has instituted several matters before our courts since the demonstrations last week on Tuesday and on Thursday and culminating into the demonstrations yesterday. We have currently five matters in court instituted by the Law Society of Kenya. Matters, uh, the first case is against the abductions that are ongoing. The second one is against the police brutality. You are aware a uh, number of uh, Kenyan citizens were involved uh, in the shootings and they were injured. We have a petition currently in court against that. We have a petition against the decision of the cabinet secretary yesterday deploying the military uh, to assist the police in civil, in, in, in protection of the country as per the Gazette notice. The court this afternoon has issued orders suspending the said Gazette notice. At the same time, declaring the same to be against the law and in the interim the declarative by the cabinet secretary uh, minister of defense has been set aside pending the hearing of the case that the law society has filed we are following up on the numerous matters that the law society has filed we shall be able to report as and when the court give directions over the same thank you so much